gobbly. They smell bad. They look bad. They have bad teeth, bad breath, and they kill low-level characters. But that's not the worst thing of all. The worst thing is that you have to paint so many of them. Gosh. What if I tell you that you can get this level of results with just a few minutes? Let's see how. So for this tutorial I'm going to be painting some of my goblins, I have a lot of them to be painted and I have painted too many already. So I usually paint them in batches of 20 but today I'm just going to do 5 of them at the time. After you prime the first thing that you should be doing is painting the colors for the metal and the metallic base that I used is lead belcher. So there are not too many things to be painted with metal in these miniatures but it's recommendable that you do that before so you don't have to worry about staining anything else later on. So you just get the paint out of the pot, don't worry about uh, mixing it with water and just go ahead and paint it. Remember if you make any mistakes now you can always go back and paint a little bit of white on any paint that you might have um, you know, scratch or maybe if you paint it over something that you didn't want to paint. Now that we're done with the miniatures, and this is probably the most boring part of it, believe it or not, we can start having fun. And the next step, we're gonna start painting the tunics. The way I on paint it. black, I start always with Drakenhof Nightshade. This is a great color, and this is how it works. You just get the ink out of it, and we're gonna paint all of the night goblin tunic but we have to be really careful that we don't go in the places where the belts are and as you can see it's tremendously fast you don't have to do anything but get some ink and spread it all over the place so I'm gonna use Gilliman blue to paint the hoods in my cave goblin just like before we're trying to save time here we don't want to spend a whole lifetime painting this. There's a saying, there is no ugly people, only poor people. And that saying can be applicable to miniatures as well. There are no ugly miniatures, only unpainted ones. These miniatures are really cheap as I said before. Some people will even give them for free to you because they don't want them. They think they are ugly because they are all the same and old. But you know what? I like proving people wrong. I like getting ugly miniatures, painting them to the best of my abilities, and people say, wow, did you do that on that? Yep, and yes, put it there. This is gonna take a couple of minutes. So, while I do that, you can get ready for the next step. I'm done with the hoods, so the next step is painting the skin. And my green skins, I want them to look quite bright, so the first ink that I'm gonna use is Cassandra yellow okay just the same as the other ones do not mix it with anything and just put it there and dab and get it on the skin now be careful some of the inks in my case are not yet dry so if you want to be safe just wait until they dry it will take a couple of minutes but I'm trying to do this as fast as possible now that the three inks that I used have dried, it's time for the next step. And I'm going to use for this one, blood leather. There are some parts in the miniature that I want to paint red. Namely the shoes, the eyes, and also this handle right here around the bow. But there is something that I want to show you guys, okay? So I'm going to use this ink to cover the eyes. But also, I'm going to do something else definitely interesting part okay I'm gonna cover the nose and I'm also going to cover the lip and this has to be done in this step to get the effect that I'm looking for painting miniatures is a process that you know it takes it takes a while and at the beginning it's tedious basically uh, the first coats are the hardest ones because you just see how much more work you have ahead of you but in this case the washes help you to achieve that in a sh short amount I'm of time. I'm done with the red now so we're gonna move ahead to the next step which is 
paint him this, the wood and the leather. For the wood and leather part, I'm gonna use Old Faithful here, Seraphine Sepia. You know I love this one, because it works great with almost everything. So, without any consideration towards anything, basically, you just put that on top of the metal. That's why we have to start painting the metal first, so we don't worry about that at this moment. And it's just a beautiful process. You just put this without any remorse whatsoever. Yes, go ahead. And we're gonna do that here in the arrow. Uh, I don't know how you guys call this in English. In Spanish, we call it carcash, but carca. But I have no idea. I'll figure it out later. There you go. And also in these small rivets that they have on their hats. Uh, I think that you should be aiming at painting 10 on a day. 10 is a reasonable reasonable number and is highly doable. You just need to focus on to a few miniatures every day and do all the steps on them. Basing, I will leave it uh, for all those miniatures at the same time and do it all together. But painting, just paint them all, paint them all together. For instance, I recommend painting 10 miniatures together. That's a good number. You don't waste time. And in my case, I have 60 of these that I need to paint. I've done 20 already. I'm doing 5 right now. And then I will have another 30. 35? No, 45 to do. No, wait, 35. And once I'm done with 35, I'll be done with Cave Goblins. I won't have any more to paint. So on my next step, I want to finish the hoods. And in order to do that, I'm gonna use this old wash, okay? This is not made anymore. So if you cannot find this, you can use this one. And it will work in a similar and way. As you can see, once again, I don't care. No mixing, no measuring, nothing. Just dab and put the wash in it. When I lived nothing. in Spain, most people wouldn't have their armies painted. A uh, few friends uh, will actually do so, but most people wouldn't. And it's such a pain in the ass to play against people who have their armies unpainted because you need to be asking questions all the time. Painted armies help a lot. It helps it helps your opponent to have a good time because they look great and you are you are in the game for the experience. It's a beautiful experience and it also helps tactically because it's easier to recognize what is what. As you can see, I'm not going into the uh, the rims of the hood because that will let it look as if there is a highlight on that side. But I want to make sure that I get these small bits here so it's dark enough to create a layer, a boundary between the two different colors. Roses are red, violets are blue, and goblins are green. And this is the color that I'm gonna use on top of the yellow to create the kind of green that I'm looking at. My cave goblins have a pale consistency to their skin. So I'm gonna use this one on top of that yellow that I painted before. Once again, this one, no water whatsoever. Try to get it as thick as possible. This is a focal point. So that's why we did the red before, so we can get a nice reddish tone on the, no, the nose. I like that on goblins. I always like people who painted the goblins with their noses kind of red. Made them look cartoony, and this is something that I'm uh, trying to achieve here. All right, there you go. So let's get to do this on all five of them. All right, let's do some details now. Let's do the shoes. I'm gonna do Fuego and Orange. Fuego and Orange combined with Blood Leather makes this rich red orangey color. So I'm gonna use that in my shoes and I'm trying to do it as fast as possible because I want to finish this video and these miniatures ASAP as well. I'm gonna be really careful not to touch the rim because the ink from the skin is not dry yet and I also want 
to keep that part a little bit lighter as to create a highlight as you can see this is real speed I'm not doing anything to the video this is just real speed I'm just doing this this fast nothing else to it but to put a little bit of ink Bam. and we're gonna use now cardboard crimson this will create a different red which is the one that I'm gonna use for the handle of the bow so let's get back to it and put a little bit of it on that handle if you're staying anything you can always clean it we're gonna or use Gucci Violet for my arrows I want that extra touch of color right there and this is what I'm going to use for that just get the ink and put it on the feathers at this moment I'm gonna let them dry for a while so I can do the final steps without fear of mixing the inks one with another so it's time for a coffee so for the next step I'm gonna use the Acrax Earthshade and with this one I'm going to paint the bow the tips of the bow which I painted metal and the quiver and the belt I'm not going to paint the arrow shafts because I want them to look different from the quiver but besides that all the things that I did with Seraphine Sepia will be stained with this wash to make them look a little bit darker we're almost there as you can see the miniature is looking already almost finished overall you can paint five miniatures on more or less an hour and a half maybe an hour if you learn how to do this fast if you are like me and you want to start playing you need to paint fast unless you don't care about your miniatures being unpainted but as I explained before it's it's good that you paint them you are uh, you are getting into the full hobby spectrum and playing with painted armies makes a world of a difference on a good table and both armies painted it makes it so good we're done with this let's get to the next step so we are on the last step on inks which is Non oil. In my opinion, cave goblins should have black clothes. The combination between Drakenhof Nightshade and Non oil creates a dark gray that looks pretty much like a black with gray highlights. Black is one of the hardest colors to achieve good results with when you paint by layering, and this makes it tremendously easy to have a decent result with the S2 steps. Now remember the technique requires you to paint clear colors before dark colors. It's the way it works because you're staining, you're not painting as much as staining. So you stain with a clear color and then you stain it, that clear color with a darker color. That's how you achieve different tones and the results are, in my opinion, quite good. Another thing, once you're painting with the dark colors at the end, you don't have to worry as much about staining with the previous layers of washes because the dark color will tone those things down and just will eat through them and cover them. That's why the technique is almost foolproof. You have to screw up real badly in order for you to go back and fix anything as long as you keep a steady hand you can make small mistakes and don't worry much about them the next step is getting some highlights and I'm going to do that with iron breaker on the metal parts so now I gotta get my brush a little bit more sharp so if you don't have a good one, make sure that you get a good brush because the details they need to, this is the part where you need finesse, okay? This is totally 
avoidable. I mean, you, you, if you don't want to do it, the miniatures will look alright anyways. But I want to go that extra mile and get these small details there. Because it makes a world of a difference in my opinion. Just putting a little bit of extra effort. Not going to kill your rate of paint. It's gonna make the miniatures look much better. As you can see I'm just highlighting the buckle belt. Those small rivets on the hood and the parts of the bow that are made of metal. Not to forget also the quiver. I'm just gonna highlight that a little bit. And then it's going to be good to go. Get used to hold your hands on a steady manner. What I do is I support my painting hand on the one that is holding the miniature and just move the fingers. This is a step that you can avoid doing if you don't want to, but in my opinion it makes a world of difference. So it's an extra mile that can help your miniatures look much better. As a last step for the metals, I'm just gonna get a little bit of room fang still and I'm just gonna put it on the top 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 of the metallic parts of the bows nothing else and a little bit here on the quiver not gonna go and do all of it just a little bit if you don't do these highlights the metal is going to be so dark that it's not going to be uh, that is striking against the dark wood that it is with so all right we're done with metals and we're gonna go to the last step which is by the way my favorite for this last step we are going to do what i call the cherry on top of the cake which is painting the eyes okay so what i'm using here before i start is chestnut ink if you don't have access to this ink because it's not made anymore you can always go back and use some of the blood letter red and do exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put a little bit here in this eye. This goblin has only one eye open because it's, he's aiming, so if he had both I will just put it in both. But in this case I'm just gonna put it in this eye. What I'm making here is create a more striking shade around the eye for the last step. And that's done just because I want the eye to be a focal point, okay? We are made to look at faces and try to recognize facial features. And the eye is a focal point. So you have to be careful and do that. All right, so we're done with the washes and this is the last paint that I'm going to use on the miniatures itself. Flask gets yellow. This is the money shot. This is the last part. And for this, you need a really good brush, something that's sharp. Okay, and it keeps its point. I'm gonna use this stiletto right here. I just get a drop of paint, a small one, and go there carefully and apply it to the center of the eye. And thus, I got a goblin looking somewhere. Repeat with each one of them, and you'll be done painting the miniature itself. With an old brush, I'm now painting the base with Renox hide. This is how I paint my bases for this army. And I have to be thorough but really careful as well because I don't want to stain the miniature now that I'm done with them. Use an old brush, don't use a good one because painting rocks and sand and things like that will screw your brushes real fast. So don't use the brush that you use for painting your miniature, use something different. Cheap brushes are good for this. All brushes are good for this, but for, for whatever you hold sacred, do not use your painting brush on this. Now that I'm done painting the bases, I need the paint to dry, so I'm going to wait. Ooh, warm. Yeah, I'm cheating. Huh? F it. Now I'm going to do the last step, which is finishing the base with Ushapti Bone as a dry brush and I'm also going to use Abaddon Black 
to paint the rims of say the bases but the first thing this one so I'm gonna use a really really old brush and I'm going to do the dry brush technique now if you're a noob and you never painted miniatures dry brush means that you get some paint on the brush and wipe most of it on a towel and then you just do this real fast careful don't stain the miniature okay but you're picking up the texture on the on the base itself and I'm gonna repeat that with all five goblins and this is how they should be looking after I have dry brushed everything I'm gonna use the same old brush in my case because it has a good surface get the black paint and paint the sides of the bases with a thick layer of black and they are basically done they just need to be varnished put some flock on them and good to go ready to play we are done that's it all the goblins painted now this took me around 90 minutes from the first wash until the last one with pauses to film but I could totally do 20 of these guys in one sitting it will take around three hours but it's feasible so if you want to finish your miniatures fast this is the technique that you need to do now pictures.